One of the most powerful things about Git is that you're able to collaborate with other people on the same code base. But there are instances where my teammates, they're also doing some really good development and my supervisor asks me to bring their changes into my branch. And so that kind of gets complicated because my branch was, it was based off of the main branch, which doesn't have their changes. So I have to merge their branch into my branch. And so in this video, I'm gonna be talking about two main ways that you can go about doing this. You can use git merge to do it, or you can do git rebase to do it. And these are the two ways that, that I've done it in my companies. And and I'll tell you which one that I prefer in this video and I'll go through an example of how how to go about doing these kinds of merges and then I'll also talk a little bit about merge conflicts which is something that you will inevitably run run into with your when you're merging different branches together and that's because sometimes they touch the same lines of code and then the git doesn't know how to resolve it so you have to resolve it manually so my name is Henrik and I'm here to help you learn the software skills and tools you need to grow in your software development journey Let's get started. By the way, if you're in the early stages of your programming journey, I've got a special gift for you. It's called my 30 day beginner coding challenge. And it's a guide that will take you from no coding experience to building your first four projects. And the best part is it's free. It's a free gift to you. In this coding challenge, I guide you in 30 days to build four programming projects and I give you some tutorials that are in C. But of course, these projects are really generic and really beginner friendly. And so you can actually code them in different programming languages. You can still benefit from this guide because you can just take the principles that are in my challenge and then apply them to your programming language. You can find the challenge in the link in the description. And if you download it and pay attention to what it says, you'll definitely learn some fundamental programming concepts that will give you a good foundation to your software development journey. So say we have this repository called Grade Calculator and if you look at grades.c, this is basically the grades.c file that I did in my last video when I give when I gave my tutorial on structs. And so we have this this file, we have a struct called student that has the name of the student, the midterms, and then the final exam and then it calculates the final grade so we have all of this initialization it also has the version number so right now it's version 2 and so we have all of these the initial values here Alvin, Bella, Charlie are the three students then we have three midterms and for, we have three grades for midterm 1 three grades for midterm 2 midterm 2 three grades for the final exam the calculation for the final grade is done here and then the final grade is spit out here so let's see how this runs so i have the code here in uh, visual studio code so let's run this and see what happens all right so we have version 2 and these are the final calculations so alvin has this grade bella has this grade and charlie has this grade so now say now let's look at the commits that we have in for for this repository for this code base so we have these three different commits i just made these commits earlier we have the the initial commit where i added the grades in and some other miscellaneous things with the version numbers and so say my supervisor wants me to implement a function to calculate the grades so let's go back to visual studio code and implement that all right so i created this function calculate final grade and it just takes the student struct and gets the midterms here and the final exam and then it averages them out to calculate the final grade it returns the final grade and so we can simplify this for loop here we can instead of doing the calculations inside our for loop here we can just call this function and provide the student okay so say i'm i'm doing my branch and then i create i'm doing this in my own branch called my branch and then say i have i made this change for grades.c then i want to do git add grades.c then i'll do a git commit but we also need to update the version. So let's make it version three. Okay, so let's push it to the remote repository. Okay, there you go. So I created a new branch and now I made all the changes that my supervisor wanted and it's gonna be in my branch. So let's go to GitHub and look at, look at that branch. All right, so here's the main branch. It has three commits and then we go to my branch and then I have those three commits here but then I also have two new commits here but then say my supervisor said Henrik I want you to also include Alvin's changes so then I'm I'm like oh what okay so let's look at Alvin's branch he has the three same commits here but he also has two new commits so how do I go about merging Alvin's branch into my branch 
this is what I did for Alvin's branch. I simplified the student initialization. So what I did was I just removed all of this, all of this stuff here to make it cleaner. And then after that, Alvin changed the version. Alvin changed it to version three. All right, so let's talk about the Git merge. So Alvin's branch looks like something like this. It has, he has the three in, or team commits that we, we both share. We both share those team commits, but he has two extra commits that he did that I don't have. And also I have my two commits that he doesn't have. But say I wanna merge his branch into my branch. So what's gonna happen is the team commits will come first. And then after that, it will either it's going to be Alvin's commits or my commits. It, I think it depends on when those commits were created. But in this case, Alvin committed his changes first. So probably Alvin's commits will come first. And then after that, my commits will come in. And then after that, we'll have a merge commit that explains that this merge happened. So I want to merge Alvin's branch into my branch. So what we're going to what we're going to do is we're going to do git branch. Oh, sorry, git merge. Oh, we can also do this one, git merge origin Alvin branch. Okay, so now let's look at our git history. So we have the three team commits here, and then we have Alvin's commits. Alvin's commits came first, and then it was my commits after. So that's what we saw. But if you if, say, say Alvin was to merge my changes into his branch, it's, it, he, his commits will probably come first again and then my my commits will come after so let's let's just 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 see what happens if alvin were to merge my branch into his branch okay so we have the team we have the team commits here then we have alvin's branch again so see alvin's commits came first and then it was my branch and then here's that that last commit the one that talks about the merge so this says that the merge is happening it's merging the remote my branch into Alvin branch. And so that's how you do git merge. All right, so let's talk about git rebase. So what rebase is, is we're rebasing our commits onto this branch's commits. We want to merge, we want to rebase our base so that this is now our base. So basically what happens if you do a git rebase with Alvin's branch is we'll take Alvin's commits and then git will take my commits that I was originally based off of these three commits, but when I do a git rebase, I want to base off of these these commits. And then it's going to put my commits at the end. And I personally like this better because it's more linear and there's no there's no merge commit here that's redundant. I don't really like that merge commit because it, it doesn't look good if you look at your git history. Okay, so we're back to where I originally started. I have the team commits here, the three ones here. Then I have my two commits here and you know, I want to do a git rebase off of Alvin's commits. So origin, Alvin, branch. Okay, so basically it rebased our my commit history off of his. So let's look at what the git history looks like now. I mean the commit history. All right, so it looks a lot cleaner. There's no merge commit. It's just the team commits here and then... Okay, so it has Alvin's commit and then it doesn't have my last update version to three and it actually talks about it here it says he's dropping the this commit this commit was my commit where i updated the version 3cd so this commit it was dropped um patch our contents already upstream so basically what git said was oh i see alvin already did that version change so i'm not going to bring it in here so actually what happened was um, because this commit was basically the same as this commit, what what Git did was he said, I'm not going to apply this second one here. So it's actually even a lot cleaner than the one with the, the merge. So now let's talk about the merge conflicts that I was referring to. So say, say I changed this to version 4. Okay, so I changed it to version 4. Then I'm going to add that. Okay, so this happens sometimes when you do a rebase because the git is complaining because originally your branch looked like this, but now it looks like this. So it, you can see my commits are here, but then for some reason, why is it, why does the, the history look a lot different? Why is Alvin's commit in between these two? And so this is one of the downsides of using git rebase, but I think it's worth it to just do it this way and then force 
um, the branch changes to happen in the remote. So we'll do git dash f here. Okay, and we look here, go to my branch. Now it has those are three original com team commits. This is Alvin's two commits, and then this was my commit to change it to the change the calculation to a function, and then I change it to version four. So let's switch over to Alvin's branch and pretend that we're Alvin for a second. So Alvin's branch still has those three co team commits, and then those two that he did. So if you look at his code, he doesn't have my function anymore, or he, he doesn't have my function at all. He never had it. Let's say he changed it to version five here. And say he wanted to give himself a higher grade. Maybe he wanted to get a hundred. All right, so now Alvin's branch has a new commit here and he, he needs to bring in my changes. But the problem is, is that he has a different version than I do. So there, there's going to be a git conflict. There's going to be a merge conflict that happens. So let's see, git, let's do git merge. And then we'll do my branch. So he, pretend I'm Alvin, I'm going to merge my branch into his branch. Pretend I'm Alvin for a second. All right, so now there's a merge conflict here. It says uh, there's a conflict in grades.c and the merge failed, fix the conflicts and then commit the result. You can do git status and check it out, see what happened. You can do a git merge abort if you don't if you don't want to continue with the merge. But you can see, oh, they both, you modified grades.c and the Henrix branch also modified grades.c. All right, so here's what it looks like when the merge conflicts happen. It's gonna say that this is yours. Yours is in head, this is your, your local change but the incoming change from my branch is going to be four. So what do you want to do? Do you want to, do you want to keep yours or do you want to update the version? And let's say, oh, five is the more up, more up to date version. So let's just use five. So what you're going to do is you're just going to remove, remove all of these lines here. And then you're going to remove this line here. Then you're going to save that. You can use a GUI tool to do the merge. You can do it here like through resolve in merge editor, but you can just resolve it manually by going to your, your actual code because Git is going to modify your actual file. So you can just change it in here. That's probably the more intuitive, more intuitive way to do it, but you can use other third party tools to do your merge. And maybe I'll make another video about that some other time. So now you've fixed it. So you do git add grades.c and use git commit to conclude the merge so you get do git commit and then here the the conflicts was in grades.c and but you want to merge my branch into alvin branch so we'll do that and now if you look at our git commit history we have uh so we have the three team team commits here then we have uh my branch was here I think this one was Alvin's commits. Then my commit was this one, the, the calculation, turned the calculation into a function, and then I updated to version four. Then Alvin updated to version five, and then I merged, or Alvin merged my branch into his branch here. So it has that merge, that merge commit here. And so if you look at our, if you do a git um, push, and say Alvin is pushing his branch up. So there you go, he pushed his branch. Now let's look at GitHub. So he, all the changes are here. Now let's look at the actual code. So this is the actual code and now there you go. So it has version five now. So it has all of our changes. It has, he has now my, my function that I created earlier. And uh, we can run this in the terminal. I mean, we can run this in our Visual Studio code. All right, so now, Everything looks good here. It has everything same as same as it is in GitHub. It has version five, and let's run that. And then there you go. So now at version five, has all of the oh Alvin's grade changed. Oh, it's because Alvin snuck in a hundred over here. So he he cheated. He changed his grade. Update version five. He updated the version five, but he also updated his final exam score to a hundred. 
All right, so there you go. That's how you do these kinds of merges with these different branches. When you're working with different people, you'll run into these kinds of scenarios. And so just to recap, there's git merge, git rebase, and merge conflicts. Those are the three things that I covered. And of course, I prefer git rebase. So I hope you can do git rebase when you're doing your, your merges in your branches. And if you have any other questions, feel free to let me know in the comment section and I'll try to help you out, try to answer some questions. I know this these kinds of things can be kind of confusing, especially if you're new to all these, these branches and all these commits and everything. All right, like I mentioned earlier, if you're just starting off in your programming journey and you don't know where to start, you can download my 30 day beginner coding challenge. And it's a 30 day guide where I teach you how to build those four beginner programming projects. It's really beginner friendly and I go step by step on how to build each one and go through the tutorials that you need to build each one. So download that in the link in the description. All right, that's it for this week's video. I hope it really helped you out and give you an idea on how people use Git to collaborate with each other and on these different code bases and also give you some ideas on how we actually use Git in the workplace. I run into these kinds of situations all the time whenever I'm working with a team of developers so I'm happy to share my knowledge with you and if this really helped you out please like and share and subscribe to the channel it would really help me about help me out and it would really help the channel out and I'll see you in the next one peace